In this episode of Sharing the Wanderer, we take a brief rest from Table Mountain and arrive in Stream Village, where we can replenish our supplies and HP. Let's head up north to Pure Water, the shop for this village. The items offered here are often rarer than those found in Bamboo Village Shop, which is 15 floors ago. But we find common items here. However, the Paralysis Staff and Squirrel of Light are always useful, particularly in the next area. We need some funds to purchase them, though. Let's sell the Golden Blade, which is just a mediocre melee weapon at this point. We cannot backtrack at this point in the game and generate a shop with a new set of items, which was possible in Bamboo Village. But there is one exploit to fake a backtrack, which we will see in the next episode. For now, let's explore the rest of town. The NPCs in this house just warn us about the next area. Nothing new here, the game just warns us about new areas with more dangerous monsters. There is also an inn near the entrance of town, which costs 2000 gitans to heal. We don't need to use it as we continue Table Mountain proper. The Mecharoid is one of the old monsters from previous floors. It's a fast monster which lays visible traps. Every time it lays a trap, it's immobilized for free hits, so it's easy to kill. Two new beasts also appear on this floor. The first, the Papco Repkina, is an upgrade of Papco Repkin. Like its level 1 form, it's a flying ghost monster and has the same weaknesses. Its one threat is that it can attack while inside a wall, where it is invulnerable. Usually it's just a matter of luring it into the open passageway. The Blaze Puff can spit fire to cut our HP by 30. It can breathe fire even through wall corners while we can't attack it. The paralysis staff we bought earlier is useful for this reason. The worst part of the Mistinos is its ability to prevent retreat. This is particularly dangerous with surrounding enemies. What is also frustrating is its high defense. However, no other monsters are near, so we should kill it with melee weapons, since we have limited gitans and staves in our inventory. As we saw in the previous episode, we should kill Menbells from long range. Close range it can summon other level 2 monsters and it also has high defense. We should note that there were 4 sound effects when we stepped on the summon trap, but only 3 monsters appeared. One monster is likely invisible, an air devil. The Menbell is the most dangerous though, the jar of hiding is useful for this type of emergency. While we were in the jar of hiding, we did see a cursed disc walk past us. We want to throw ketons at this type of monster since it can curse our items close range. We have enough items already. Exploring the rest of the floor is too risky, so let's take the stairs. But let's regenerate health at the expense of our fullness. Fortunately, our shield lowers our hunger rate. Super Gazes, Mistinos, and Blaze Puffs no longer spawn here. Four new monsters replaced them. Each is lethal, but not one of them is as dangerous as the Super Gaze. The first is the Haze Hermit. It can cast a spell which stops HP regeneration. If it casts a spell a second time, our health will then start decreasing by 1 point per turn. The second spell is particularly dangerous when we trigger an invisible big landmine trap because the explosion drops our HP to 1. The spell then takes effect and we immediately die. Here we see the spell in action. Our HP turns red and regeneration is sealed for about 50 turns. The Hermit can also cast from long range. The second spell now decreases our HP 1 point per turn. 
Neither of these two monsters deal high damage. The Menbel can summon other beasts, but we are in a cramped passageway. The Polygon Jive is only dangerous in its ability to lower our fullness. The Menbel already caught one monster, which is probably standing behind it. Without any free space, the Menbel usually can't summon any more beasts. Let's focus on a beast coming from the room right now. Fortunately, we do not have a cursed restorative herb, nor is it an Endulu since it was ID'd in Stream Village. We can never be too careful though. The monster that Menbel summoned earlier likely moved. Now let's summon a new level 2 beast, the Hell Reaper. This Reaper is normally not found in Table Mountain. It's an upgraded Death Reaper. It can move two times and attack two times per turn. We allowed this Mendel to summon again. This time we are in trouble. The Chainhead, which never spawns naturally after Stream Village, is here. If we recalled earlier, this beast hits hard. In small rooms, swinging for traps pays off. This sleep trap is almost a death sentence. That monster to our right is a floppy handy. Again, it does not spawn naturally in Table Mountain. Likely it was the other monster the Menbel originally summoned. It isn't a big threat. The Spike Blast is an upgraded Spike Bomb. Like its younger brother, it explodes at low HP. We don't want to fight one of these when we are under the Haze Hermit's second spell. An explosion would drop our HP to 1 and we would immediately die from the spell. This armband protects us from monsters that drain our maximum strength or fullness. We could have used this more in the Waterfall Marsh though. Unfortunately, the Polygon Jive drains our current, not max fullness. The anti-drain armband is useless here as we lose 30 fullness points. The last floor of Table Mountain proper. The exit's in the room, but we have to fight 4 beasts to exit. To our right is the Minotaur. It deals obscenely high damage. Worse, we have to deal with the dreaded Hermit Bomb combo. Let's kill the Hermit first, but our myths suggest that there's also an Air Devil in this room. We'll have to kill the Hermit close range first. Thankfully, the Hermit did not cast his second spell. Now our HP is getting low. The Minotaur can one-shot us right now. Let's knock it back so we can handle the other two monsters. The Spike Blast will not bother us anymore, and we should now weaken the Minotaur. It can deal 30 damage right now, 60 if it gets a critical hit. Also, another new beast enters the room. It's a Hoverfowl. It can destroy herbs, scrolls, and staves, which are valuable at this point in the game. Gitans to the rescue. We could also store staves in jars as well. The final form of this beast destroys jars though. Fortunately, level 4 fowls don't appear in Table Mountain. And with that, we finished Table Mountain proper. Let's head to the next area.